Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am your host, Romedy, and welcome here to part two on hoppers. Um, I've gotten a few questions about all of the carts and things and how the sorting works back here, so we are going to talk about that. Um, hopefully, we're going to show you a way to improve it, a way that this may be obsolete now. Uh, hopefully, everybody understand it well. Um, we're going to do a little bit more hopper logic regarding um, hopper locking, and we'll get into that. And then uh, this is what we'll do first, I think. I've got a little experiment set up. Uh, it's just going to show you how quickly items will move through hoppers. So if you start to build large hopper clocks, you can appropriately time them out. Um, and then finally, um, I've had a lot of requests to show automatic farms. Um, that use collection via hoppers, so I am going to build one of those for you real fast. And uh, yeah, so this should be a fun episode. Uh, yeah, but let's go back uh, to our experiment here. We'll get started with that. Right then, uh, so here is our experiment. And um, in a nutshell, what we've got is um, a button here that is going to send a pulse down this row of repeaters. And it's also going to turn this torch off, which currently has this hopper locked. And as you can see, we have a grass block in there. Um, and so when we flip that torch off, that grass block is now going to move down these hoppers. And it's going to allow us to get an approximation for how quickly an item um, moves horizontally in a chain of hoppers. And my tests have been inconclusive. It's not exact. Um, and over the course of a line like this, the hoppers are going to outrun the repeaters if we just leave them on four ticks like that. And I'm going to demonstrate for you here. What we're interested in is when the repeater here in front lights up, and we're interested in that in relation to when this comparator lights up. Uh, these repeaters are going to stay on for a longer period of time since they uh, are going to stay on for four ticks, and that's only going to stay on for you know however long it's in the hopper. Um, so these are a little bit interesting, but you're going to notice that the hoppers will outrun um, the repeaters. So here we go. Here at the end, it's starting to see the comparator. It uh, speeds up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh one right here, I'm going to go ahead and drop it back. Uh, let me fix the time real fast. We're going to go ahead and drop um, the seventh repeater to three ticks instead of four. And so far, this has been a pretty good uh, approximation of how it's going to work. So uh, here, we'll run our experiment again. See, and now... Um, Everything has made it much, much closer down here at the end. It seems to get a little out of sync about here on the 6th and 7th repeaters. I'm going to do it one more time uh, with it on two ticks, and you'll notice that um, the repeaters are now going to win as we run our one more time here. Here we go. They're going to win down here on the end. Repeaters are now ahead. So yeah, there we go. Um, not exact. But it seems like uh, every seventh hopper, um, we're going to lose a tick of time. Um, and before that, you know, for these first six, we're moving roughly at four ticks per hopper horizontally. Obviously, that's not 100% um, accurate either. It's slightly faster than that. So... Um, yeah, so that was a neat little experiment. I will continue to play with that. If I find a really good answer to it, I will let you know. Uh, but for the moment here, a little inconclusive. It's slightly faster than four ticks, I guess. Hockey dokey then. Uh, so as promised, we are going to get back into a little bit of hopper locking uh, and some logic that is behind it. And uh, if you remember from last time, if we go ahead and stick a repeater here and a torch there, and we now drop an item into our hopper, it does not move anywhere. And that is what we call a locked hopper. And now the very instant we um, destroy that signal back here, then this will go ahead and move into our chest. And it's pretty much good. Um, 
but we can get a little more creative with this, I think. So let's take a look at something um, like this right here. So we'll play a little bit of trivia. We'll have three trivia questions for you. Which hopper do you think is going to be locked using that signal, the top one or the bottom one? Well, we'll find out here. And if you said the top one, you were wrong. And if you said the bottom one, you are also wrong because both of these hoppers are now locked. So trick question right off the bat. Not a very good teacher. Sorry about that. Um, this setup right here is actually going to lock both of our hoppers, which can be useful uh, and it can also be real frustrating. So there's number one. What happens if instead we now place a block and then a repeater and a torch? So this block right here is taking power from the repeater. Is that going to lock our hopper? Well, it won't hop. It won't um, lock it if it's not there. But um, yes, it will. So the power uh, from that block is going to go ahead and lock our hopper, and that's just kind of neat, uh, but also kind of frustrating. Uh, so there's number two. Now question number three will be the same setup, but a block below the hopper. Is that going to lock the hopper? Uh, the answer to that is yes as well. So you can see that the properties of locking are a little finicky, um, which is kind of fun, but also kind of frustrating. Um, and you know that's important, and we're going to come back to that here in a minute. Uh, there's a couple things I want to do first. I want to go through those uh, because not everybody is going to be interested in what I do at the end of the video. Um, the end of the video is going to be me kind of struggling to build because I have not done this before. Um, I don't feel like YouTubers, you never get to see what they do behind the scenes. You just see the finished product and they always look so smart. And um, I don't feel like they always are. I'm certainly not. So I want to go ahead and condense this sorter down using only hoppers and I will kind of show you that in real time as we do it here. Um, but first I'm going to give you a little bit of logic on the sorter itself and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna build a little farm uh, with automatic collection using hoppers. I'll show you two different ways to do that. Um, remember that 22 items in a hopper uh, will read with a comparator as only one little bit of redstone here. And if I go ahead and break the signal, because that's going to carry and run the rest of the machine, if we go here and if I drop in a 23rd item, then you'll see that it now travels out two spots. And that is something that can be really, really useful for us. Um, obviously, in this case, once we put our repeater back, it's going to run our cart, you know. Um, but that's the property that I want to keep in mind. And, and that works for, you know, 22 to 23, 44 to 45. Um, probably more than that is kind of unnecessary. Uh, but it'll work for both of those, certainly. So, um, so again, the idea, the goal at the end of the day is um, to condense this down and get rid of these mine carts. Um, if you're familiar with how servers work, those mine carts are now entities. That was a change. In the 1.6 update, they're now tied to server lag. Um, so this um, model still works, especially if you're in a single player or a very small server. But when you get into larger servers, um, it lags a lot. And it, it, it's really slow now and outdated. Um, and I feel like there are better ways to do it. And that way is probably with uh, a hopper-only sorting, which I will um, attempt here at the end. So before we do that, let's go ahead and build a farm and let's get to um, some auto collection. Right then, so let's talk about some auto farms. Um, I'm sure that everybody has seen basically this model here in front of us. Um, just using a water stream to go ahead and push items um, into your collection hopper um, and then where they will arrive in a chest uh, you know, you could do that. So we can come down here and um, throw a bunch of items in there. And now we can watch them travel down the water. Hopper is going to suck them up once they get over here. Um, pretty much just like that. 
and now our items will start to filter into the chest uh, just like they are supposed to which is kind of nice uh, so yeah that is kind of the basic idea there um, this obviously would be your crop and then behind here you would have uh, water sources that you know controlled by a piston so the piston would pull the block down and then the water would then push your items out into the stream over here um, I don't have this measured out appropriately, but that is kind of the gist of the idea um, like that. Now, uh, you do not have to use water if you are rich um, or if you have a bunch of iron. You can just go ahead and run hoppers along um, just like this guy right here. And then at the end of this, we can... Uh, control our water like that now so if we had you know our water sources there in the corner then you know any items that we go ahead and toss into the stream down there are now going to get pushed um, unfortunately into this center block it looks like where they are not moving anywhere um, we'll go back here and put another water source right here in the middle and try again so we'll throw more there we go um, and now you will watch these kind of get pushed down, collected by the hoppers here at the end of it. Um, and then obviously they will then travel down the way and um, into our collection chest at the end. And so this method right here is going to work really well for wheat, carrots, potatoes, um, things like of that. You know, we do have to go back and kind of replant them again. Um, but uh, cannot be helped, I suppose. You're going to have to be that way. Uh, there are, of course, um, easier things that you can do for melon, um, for sugar cane. Um, you can use bud switches. You can use um, block updates, um, daylight sensors, you know, multiple things like that to go ahead and do your collections. Um, and then there's um, actually something kind of fun for cactuses so let me go ahead and get materials and I'll be right back alright then so um, cactus and this is maybe something kinda outside of our tutorial here tonight uh, but that's okay um, if you didn't know and I'm sure most of you did um, when cactus grows into uh, an adjacent block it is actually gonna go ahead and break so we can use that property um, to go ahead and do collection of cactus, which um, is just gen generally pretty neat. So uh, let's go ahead and set up our collection chest, let's say right there. And now uh, you do not have to be this uh, uptight about it. I'm just going to go ahead and surround our little cactus block here. Um, so if our cactus is going to go ahead and grow, you know, we all we need to do is just have a block here on the side. And every time then, um, when the cactus grows, it's going to break on its own and it's going to show up here in our collection chest. So you can have a very efficient, um, absolutely automatic, no nothing at all required. Um, and it'll go ahead and grow just like this, which is kind of neat. So, yeah, there's a couple auto farm ideas. Um, if there's anything specific, if you want me to show me, that's fine. I can. I do have a tutorial on um, an automated melon farm that is already up and running. Uh, reasonably proud of that. So, um, you know, maybe take a look at that for more details concerning um, collection for melons, pumpkins, and um, especially bud switches.